Good morning. It is currently it's currently 6:35 in the morning. Saturday morning in Seoul. We are just about to go to the subway station to meet up with our tour. We are going to the DMZ today. I'm very excited to go up north of Seoul. Check it out. Last night we flew in to Gimpo. We are staying in the Jongno area. Got some food. Checked into our hotel. Got a good night's sleep. Bright and early. So let's get to it. So we traveled up to Seoul for two reasons. The first was that it was Chris's birthday present. He's really wanted to go up to the DMZ ever since we moved to South Korea. And the second reason was that my grandfather served in the US Army from 1951 to 1953, and he spent a year in Korea during the Korean War. He was part of the 82nd Engineering Construction Division, and he repaired roads that had been bombed out and delivered ammunition to the front lines. He even built a pool table for the South Korean soldiers. Okay, just wait. My grandfather is such an awe-inspiring man and has always been such a huge influence on my life, now and always. I think it's amazing that he did his part to make South Korea a super safe and lovely country for his granddaughter and his great-granddaughter, even though he had no idea that we would even exist. So this trip is for you, Papa. I love you. Thank you for everything. We miss you. We started the tour at 7 a.m. meeting our tour guide in the bus at Gongdeok Station. We booked through VIP travel and although they advertised an 8 a.m. start time in a pickup at our hotel, that was not the case. We boarded the bus and started our 45 minute trip north. While we were driving, we were given a headset and our guide Sue gave us a short history of Korea interspersed with some fun facts like there's more than 1,800 Starbucks in all of Korea. They're everywhere. to our first destination which was Imjinak Park which was built in 1972 and gets about 1.2 million visitors each year. We got here an hour before it opened to be able to be the first people on the shuttle bus to the DMZ. We weren't expecting all of these waiting times but there was a cafe that opened early so we managed to get some coffee and some snacks. While we wait our guide is showing us some pictures giving us a little bit more background information on the DMZ and Bodhi and I are gonna try and get a coffee. Well, I'm gonna get a coffee. It's very early. <laughs> Nothing's open yet. So we had to meet at 7 a.m. Um, and we're here, we got here at 7.45. It was quite a quick little journey. But nothing starts until 9.30. So we're just hanging out until 9.30 when we can get on our shuttle bus. Who oh, no, knows? At 9 a.m. we were able to view the historical railway that used to bring refugees from North to South Korea during the war in Freedom Bridge where prisoners of war and soldiers would cross. 20 minutes here to walk around and explore. We've got the fence with ribbons tied up as symbols for people who are going to return. And behind us we have the locomotive that was had how many bullet holes? Over a thousand bullet holes. The main attraction here is a steam locomotive that was moved here in 2004 after being abandoned in the DMZ. We finally boarded the shuttle to cross into the DMZ and after a quick stop to check our passports, we headed to the third infiltration tunnel that was dug after the ceasefire with the intention of invading South Korea. So as part of our tour, we went down the third tunnel. It was 300 meters long, 75 meters down, and then we walked all the way to where we can see the military demarcation line. It was definitely a little bit freaky. I think it was quite closed off. Pretty cool, a little spooky, but definitely worth the trip. Yeah! 
After a few photo opportunities and a quick informative video, we were shuttled to the Dora Observatory to view North Korea from high-powered binoculars. We are at Dora Observatory. We just saw our little first glance of North Korea and we're gonna go up to the third floor and look through some binoculars so we can see North Korea. It was a beautiful clear day so we had excellent views of the small city which we were told is a propaganda city and we could even see a few tiny North Korean people going about their day. They're normal size. I think they're just tiny because of the, the distance. That's true. That is very true. Well, it's a pretty good view from this observatory but it feels a bit weird. I feel like I'm spying on North Korea or trying to look to see if it's really bad or like what's going on but it's crazy busy the tour is really fast but the binoculars are pretty cool we can look across the river we can see the North Korean flag probably the closest that we will ever get to going to North Korea and, ah, so windy we're gonna move on to the next part of our tour now finally our last stop was a local village that sold DMZ specialty chocolate alcohol and ginseng so we are at the last stop of our tour. We stopped off at a little local village market and you can get like DMZ branded snacks. So we picked up some DMZ chocolate and you could get, yeah, it's basically like a non-descript CU. <laughs> but these little villages, I think there's three total, right? Three total little villages. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's three DMZ villages, but they nobody wanted to move here when they created this dmz zone so they shipped 40 families who were originally from here 40 military families and 40 farmers families and supposedly they make three times more money each year than people who live in seoul they don't pay tax. because they don't pay tax and then they they sell ginseng wine and whiskey and they're organic soybean like it's a really good fertile farming area but we picked up some chocolate so let's see how it is it's black bean black beans? chocolate covered black beans do you like it yeah mm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I do want to say we did book the no shopping tour and we're ending with shopping. <laughs> but it's part of the village. Ten minutes. It's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add? Just listen to someone on the Bluetooth headset right now. <laughs> What's that? Ten four. Ten four, big daddy. Get out of here. Overall, the tour was informative, well run, and our guide was incredibly kind. We are not expecting as much waiting and would have enjoyed a little bit more time at each of the stops, but it was a lot of sights to pack into a half day tour. I think it only ended up being about 20 minutes at each of the main locations. The DMZ is a main tourist destination, so if you want to minimize the crowds, head early morning during the week rather than the weekends. Papa, I love you. Thank you for your service. What do you want to say? I want, I don't, I say nothing. Say, I love you, Papa. I love you, Papa. <laughs> <laughs>